Boeing's MQ-28 Ghost Bat just shot an AIM-120 for the first time. But did the Turkish Red Apple already beat them to it? Let's take a look at a video and the Boeing press release and see what we can learn. All right, let's take a look. The MQ-28E7 and FA-18F successfully demonstrated an autonomous air-to-air -air weapon engagement. The MQ-28 provides combat capability, reducing risk for crewed aircraft, providing greater tactical reach. There it is. There's an AMRAM. And that's a live AMRAM with the yellow stripe, in case anybody was wondering. God, that thing's creepy. There's no, nothing. It's small. It looks tinier than the Turkish Red Apple. But this is the collaborative combat aircraft, so the loyal wingman. So it's not full size like the uh, Turkish version, because I know everybody wants to compare the two. Carrying the one AMRAM internal. And there's the drone it shot. And there's the AMRAM Fox 3. Splash one. They don't show it actually hitting. Uh, it could have been telemetry. Might not have had a warhead, so there might not have been a splash. But they definitely don't show it. Got some cool camera footage, and that's it. All right. So here's the article. Uh, the highlights, MQ-28 collaborative combat aircraft shoots down an airborne target. We only saw part of that. Groundbreaking mission showcases the Ghost Bat's autonomous end-to-end -end combat capabilities. Counter air weapons engagement demonstrates power of crewed, uncrewed teaming with an MQ-28, an E-7, and a Super Hornet. So this is a historic achievement. Boeing and the Royal Australian Air Force have successfully executed force integration air-to-air -air autonomous weapon engagement from an MQ-28 CCA. It involved the Ghost Bat teaming up with the Wedgetail and the Super Hornet. And so here's how it worked. They all launched from separate locations. Once the airborne, somebody on the E-7 took custodianship of the MQ-28, ensuring safety and engagement oversight. And then the F-A-18F Super Hornet teamed with the MQ-28. So it was a two-seater. The Wizzo was probably in the back doing stuff. It was in a combat formation to provide sensor coverage. And once the Super Hornet identified and tracked the target, targeting data was shared across all three platforms. So Super Hornet targeted the drone or whatever that they shot, the target, handed it off to the Ghost Bat. Ghost Bat says Fox 3. So it adjusted its position, received authorization from the E7 to engage because they're doing the safety hammer and successfully destroyed the target using uh, AIM-120 AIM AMRAM. So that's a little different than what the Red Apple... Uh, the claims from the Turkish uh, Red Apple test where they said it, theirs was using their own ESA radar in that drone. And drone just means unmanned. It, that, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean size or anything like that. In their unmanned aerial vehicle, it had its own radar, it did its own targeting, and it shot the missile. This is saying the Super Hornet found the target, handed it off, it shot the missile whether it was a track or it, it handed it off to its own sensors or whatever. And then the E7 gave it final authority to launch. So not quite as autonomous, it sounds like, but still, you know, fully autonomous. And this is more what you would see. And I talked about this in the other video because we weren't sure how it happened. This is more realistic as far as how we would employ the thing where you're using it kind of as a missile truck, as that loyal wingman, to uh, hand off targets to, to go shoot stuff downrange. It demonstrates the maturity and sophistication of Boeing's mission autonomy solution, which is built on open standards and government architectures and is capable of integrating with fourth, fifth, and sixth gen aircraft. It says Colin Miller, Vice President, General Manager of Phantom Works, Boeing Defense. True example of speed to capability, open architecture, a lot of words, uh, but they did this in under eight months, which is pretty impressive, so good for them. Uh, it's pretty cool that they were able to uh, uh, get that done. So in case you wanted general information about the MQ-28, that's their website. It's a for force multiplier. It uh, fused sensor and payload information to complement extend intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, 
early warning and more rapid capability insertion um, in the high threat environments. It's 38 feet long and can fly more than 2,000 nautical miles to support crewed and uncrewed assets. So that's pretty, pretty impressive there. We'll see. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think the Turkish uh, Red Apple beat them to it? Or is this just different? Or are we comparing apples to oranges? Hmm. Interesting. But uh, yeah, one week we're talking about an autonomous, uh, indigenously produced Turkish drone shooting its own missile. And the next week we're talking about an Australian uh, Boeing collaborative effort shooting an AIM-120. Uh, but different tests. So I don't know that you can compare the two, but interesting stuff. The future of aviation, I think, is having these loyal wingmen and a manned fighter being the quarterback for multiple of these. But uh, I don't know. As Maverick said, maybe so, sir, but not today. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.